What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the wall. Let's get straight into it. I had a video go super viral where I talked about the walk away method. Oh my gosh, those things are bigger than my dreams. Goodness gracious. Where basically you approach a girl in the store, you tell her she's pretty, and you walk away, and she's going to be intrigued, and she's going to follow you and ask you for her number. For your number, sorry. Anyways. Stupid. Why were the number one comments on those vid that video, I'll get pepper sprayed, or don't even try it, guys, or if you're not over six foot, it's not worth it, or you can only do this if you're hot. What, what is this? What is this? Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? It's your boy, Levi. Hey, we're just going to get into this freaking video, dude. We're just going <laughs> to... What's happening, bro? Like, wh why are you bouncing around so much? Are you on a back road? What's going on? Uh, it's so crazy. And I know that sometimes girls can be a little difficult sometimes. But I'm a starting little? to think that guys just aren't even trying. Because I have lots of girlfriends. I'm a girl myself. And I've been... Wait, you are? Stupid. ...approached in public. And I always make it a very positive experience even if a guy asks for my number if he just walks up to me and straight up asks for my number i'll just say oh i'm sorry i have a boyfriend even if i don't so i'm kind of over so this lie. narrative of men being like oh don't even try it it's not even worth it because i think 99 percent of women would absolutely love for you to come up and give them a compliment it's starting to feel like you just want to be the victim and you're blaming us saying we act like you're creepy, but in reality, that's not true. I know most girls, it would make their entire day if a guy came up and complimented them. Oh my God, no. This is a complete opposite. It's not gonna make any dudes, or it's not gonna make any woman's day for a guy that she doesn't know to come up to her. That is the dumbest piece of advice. And this is this is one of those girls just shamelessly plugging her OF, trying to get more simps to subscribe me. Like, I think you should come up. I think you should come up and compliment girls. Girls really like that. No, they don't. Stop the cap. What is for my moms? This one is for my moms that have multiple school aged children. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Mom, you said I would ask you. <laughs> okay, why do you have the face tat as well? She has pretty eyes, though. Oh, I know how I handled sending my first baby to kindergarten. And I cried on the way to work. And then. Is she country. <laughs> And then I was fine. I'm trying to figure out what is different about the last kid that you see in the kindergarten. Because I don't know if it's a combination of like watching your older kid take your baby into school. Or if it's just the realization that you really don't have a baby anymore. I'm asking because this seems like excessive emotion. Mm, it's what you guys do. <laughs> it's what you ladies do all the time. But also... <laughs> Not crying, laughing. But also, I know that I'm not alone, and I know that a lot of moms do this. So I'm pretty much just asking for a friend, um, how, like, what you did throughout the day to cope. Because I can't, I cannot be like this today. Good like, job. how do you keep yourself from going in there and just sitting with her? And she wasn't even sad. That's the thing. She go wasn't... clean the house. Go get a job. <laughs> a lot of things you could do, honey. Wasn't even... Here, here, here's one quote, man, that my mom told me when I was younger because we were dirt poor. She goes, only boring people get bored. She said, bye, mom. She walked in there. She asked me to help her hang up her little book bag. And then she said, okay, bye. I love you. Well, guess what kids do? What do we do now? <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. Like, a lot of women have to have children because they can't find unconditional love in any other facet of life. So they have to go out there and have children. And then once they're done having children, they feel like their life is meaningless. This is where I always say, kids aren't gonna give you meaning in life. They may give you temporary meaning, but your job as a parent is to raise them, put them out into the world. From the ages of birth to five, you love them unconditionally, you spoil them, right? But from five to 16, you work them like a dog. Jordan Peterson talks about that. Because if you don't teach a kid how to work, they're not gonna become constructive adults in the workplace or go own a business or do anything. If they just go to school and you're letting them learn all of their work ethic from, uh, work ethic from school, I knew a lot of people that were super smart and could breeze through high school. Let me know in the comments, chat. Did you know a lot of people that were just super smart? They never had to study, never, like, it, it was effortless for them to go to school and get, like, all A's or B's. Like, bro, I was stupid. I made my first C in third grade. I made my first C in third grade. I was dumb. But I'm sure everybody knew somebody like that. God. Smart, that is. That's all. I don't know if you've noticed, but women have this art of crying over everything.
it's like a gift from the. It's true. Yeah, that's also so true. Like she's so happy that her kids are growing up, but yet she's still crying about it. It's like this is what you wanted. You wanted them to grow up. You wanted them to get to an age where they could go to kindergarten. And it's like she'll she'll cry about being overwhelmed when the kids are home all day for the summer, and then she'll also cry when they're gone. It's like you just can't make some of these women, these modern women especially, you just cannot make them happy. If she was a wife, she probably wouldn't have the tattoos on her face. First of all, that is a huge no-no. Don't get tats on your face, honey. Take out the nose ring. Um, you can tell she's got the veneers because nobody's teeth are that straight and that white. Um, so. She, you know, there's a little bit of bop lore in there, probably. She's a runner, she's a track star. But, like, it's, it's your job as a parent to raise them to a certain age and then let them be successful, thriving adults. He thought her with another Reddit story for you. Oh, Title story. oh, before we get into this, don't forget to cop the new ebook, The Four Steps to Style. It's in the description right there. Shameless plug. The story is Am I the astronaut for suspecting my wife after she went to Mexico and spent no money and took no pictures? Ooh. She went on a leave no trace trip? Yeah. I am in the middle of probably the biggest crisis of my adult life and I can barely think. So I apologize in advance if this comes across as really weird or rambly. My wife went to Mexico last week for a friend's bachelorette party and aside from the plane ticket, the hotel, and the first day's food and drinks, she didn't spend a penny all week. I mean, on the credit card. She's a runner. She's a track star. Yeah, I know what she was doing. Hard. It's clear as day that on Monday and up until about 9 p.m., she was buying dinner, stuff at the hotel, shop, drinks at the bar, souvenirs. And then at 9 p.m., she didn't spend another cent the entire week until she was at her layover airport in Dallas. She says it's because her friend took over and paid for everything. I guess this is plausible, but it's still giving me a funny feeling. What is worse is that my wife. Oh, she was getting a funny feeling. <laughs> Somebody was giving her something real funny, bud person who posts her entire life on Instagram and TikTok, mostly Instagram. But if she does anything from getting a latte to picking up the kids at school, she will post it either as a picture or as a story. Oh, the last thing she ran, posted but... on TikTok was that a trend of people jumping into their vacation from the airport. And after that, her social media is blank. I was kind of keeping an eye on it because I was excited for her to go on the trip. And again, I guess it's plausible, but it gives me a funny feeling. When she got home, I said, I can't wait to see all the pics she took. And she really blew me off and said she just didn't feel like taking pics that week. She has also been incredibly distant. And last night she said she just felt like sleeping on the couch because the AC hits better. This is 100% true, but I swear I heard her talking on the phone in the middle of the night. When I got up to check on her, I accidentally tripped over the dog and made a huge racket. So when I got downstairs, she appeared to be asleep. I brought all of this up this morning and said I'm not accusing her of anything, but all of this put together is making me feel uneasy. I wasn't trying to bait her or fight with her. Bro, let me, let me pause it there. Pause. Would Let me know, chat. Let me know in the comments. Would you be okay with your wife going on a girl's trip to Mexico? Boy, you gotta be about as stupid as they could be. There is absolutely no way in hell that I would let my wife go on a girl's trip to Mexico. That's where girls get ran. She's a runner, she's a track star. That's where girls go get mileage. That's where girls go have fun. Yeah, and we'll meet these other guys and they were from Morocco and then they sprinted through me and then I got all this mileage and then I had all this fun and I didn't document any of it in my phone. I just left it up in a hotel and it's just, it is what it is. And then she gets back and the husband's like, baby, what happened? What happened, baby? Bro, that is so stupid. You, you have to draw the line. Let me know in the comments. Would you let your wife go on a girl's trip to Mexico for me? Absolutely. Absolutely not, buddy. Just get my feelings on the table. She said, you are a major f***ing asshole for Ooh. bringing this up on her first day back at work. Gaslighting. I said I wasn't trying to pry, just communicating with her. And she said, your communication is prying. And I am not discussing this with you ever again. Oh, it's a wrap. She then took the kids to summer camp and left. Am I the astronaut? Yeah. We have an edit and an update, but... For someone to go on a trip, and it is plausible, like it, it, bachelorette trips, you know, it, if it's an all-inclusive thing, it's possible that they were like, all right, you don't spend another dime. Everything is on us from here on out. Could be. What, what, what no, about? No, no, no. But she spent money while she was there, so it wasn't all-inclusive. Uh, something's fishy, bud. Uh, the rest of it, though. Her behavior change is more alarming, right? And she's defensive. And as we read in a story earlier, it's the response that elevates. Oh, hey. <laughs> Brothers, human beings are creatures of habit. When you get used to doing something, your brain starts doing it on autopilot. This woman is the typical type who shares her entire life on social media. She was well, Yeah, that's the thing. She shares her entire life on social media and then all of a sudden she doesn't want to 
you know, she doesn't want to share her life on social media. That's that's a huge red flag. If she does everything from lattes to picking up the kiddos, like, bro, there, there's no way. Sus factor. Okay, let's dive into the edit here. Edit. So I realized that her text probably synced to her iPad, so I just checked. Took mm. me a while to figure out the passcode, but I did, but there was an iMessage at 9.15 the night she got to the resort to a number with no contact info that said, okay, I'll meet you in the lobby. Oh, Is it's a the- wrap, bud. It's a wrap. Somebody was clapping her cheeks. That's what it sounded like in the hotel room. Somebody, is this somebody giving a round of applause? <laughs> That's what it was. The app you said Signal. I looked up Signal, and it's oh, kind it's of a kind of like WhatsApp. It's the iPad rap. doesn't have Signal on it. So she downloaded a different app to chat with somebody and then deleted it. Edit two, if you've been following my comments, you've seen that my sister is coming over, and she's an insane internet sleuth and is relentless when it comes to this kind of cheating stuff. Yes. She also scares me a bit, so I'm hoping this isn't a mistake. I'm going to probably stop responding for a while so we can talk, and she can do her thing. I am numb, but she can do this. Thanks for everyone and the nice comments and the reality check. It's not looking good. And at three, she cheated. My sister was able to get lots of info from the real estate guy, and my wife denied it at first, but then admitted it. Oh. Sorry it took so long to update, but I'm numb. I have literally zero idea what to do now. Leave her. Uh, edit four was deleted for personal reasons for OP, for Candy Thunder. Understood. Edit five. I know people really want updates, and we've been talking, arguing, screaming, threatening all day long. I'm more confused than I was this morning, that's for sure. But I'm also confused, exhausted, sad, upset, nervous, and I don't know what to do. I did make a preliminary appointment with a family law attorney to tomorrow to talk about protecting assets and how to navigate the legal way ahead, regardless of what I choose to do. I will say there's a subreddit that this was cross-posted to, and it may be the most toxic group of people I've ever seen online, and I feel really bad for those people. (laughs) As for the privacy issues, no one has figured out who we are. That's not a challenge, by the way. I'm very tired, and I doubt people are still invested, but if there's still an interest, I can update either on this post or a new one in a few days. I'm really hoping to sleep tonight. My sister still has the kids, and they are having a blast and went to the lake with her boyfriend's family today, so I'm glad they're in good hands. And the official update now. Drum roll, please. Yeah, I have um uh, I have some professional some professional buddies, like some industry buddies who who like to use signal for chatting. Um and that's literally it. Yeah, what's that? But it's one of those if your company uses it and you you know you want to interface or or engage with other with other collabs. Or apparently, if you're trying to hide cheating. <laughs> Why, are you, Why are you running? Why are you running? She cheated. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun in the life of a woman who travels. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you gotta, you gotta call a spade a spade, man. If you knew she was going on a freaking girls trip and um, you didn't have access, you should have had access to the phone from the jump. Is what I'm saying, like. You should just be able to grab your girl's phone at any time. Does somebody want a Chinola? You hungry, bud? Free. Wait. Free. Free. Go to your place. Let's see. Let's get back. I'm kind of invested in this story, though. Let's see what else we have here. Feelings for Chad and having a few passionate days with him in Mexico. But later, they say all men are bad. Yeah. Right? Let's continue. Because this is where the video gets good. Ooh, okay. Official update. Good morning, everyone. I know it's been a while, but as I'm sure you can imagine, this has been the worst week of my life. And it's been an absolute whirlwind of activity trying to get things set up in a life that I don't really even recognize anymore. First of all, I'm now in the process of getting a legal separation from my wife with the aim of getting divorced. Nice. She and I both want to take the process very slow so it's fair to everyone. I do have a personal lawyer who is handling the separation, but even she recommends that it will be cheaper and easier for us to do a mediated divorce. She, edit the lawyer, not my wife, has a colleague who has this sort of package deal where we will work together with a certified counselor while we are meeting with the, the mediation lawyer to handle the legal aspects. The goal is to learn to be co-parents and friendly while we go through the breakup. I know my wife is hoping to see the counselor with the aim of reconciling. I am doing the counseling so I can learn how to treat her with some sort of respect as the mother of my kids for their benefit. I can't possibly see reconciling, but I guess stranger things have happened. To those of you who read along last week, know that my sister is one of those internet sleuths who, you, who, if you can tell her a first initial in someone's eye color, she can come up with the person's entire life history in a matter of minutes. Jesus. I've pretty much let her handle all of the dirty work. She did some research on the guy, and he's an absolute piece of shit. 
He has judgments and liens against him all over the country. He has six kids with four different women and is delinquent on child support for most of them. And it seems like his M.O. is to just wait until the kid turns 18 and hope they stop coming after him. And this is the guy my wife picked to ruin everything for. My sister did get in touch with his current wife and said that she has pics and text messages to prove that he was cheating and so far has not heard back from her. Who knows what's going on with that? My assumption is it's happened so many times she expects it and tolerates it, or maybe we will hear back from her. Uh, it was the first gut reaction that, that I felt, too. This It's not a surprise to her, and it's happened before. My wife and I are still in the house together until the separation is official, oh. and we may continue to, to be even after the legal separation is done. I just don't know, and I figure as long as we can be friendly to each other, then it's okay. I had to go away on business last week, and when I got back on Saturday, it was, it was pretty clear the fight in her was gone, and she wanted to talk and accept full responsibility and was willing to come clean about the whole thing. Mm. I told her I really didn't need to hear anymore because her affair partner had confessed the whole thing and even sent pics. I think her thing now is that she's utterly humiliated and has been very quiet, uh, even obsequious as her general manner around the house. It's not really what I want because I didn't get married to have a servant and the change in her normal fiery and funny personality is only a reminder that something is really wrong. Kids are doing fine. They're spending a lot of time with my sister and her boyfriend and his family. So hopefully looking back, this will just be the summer before their parents got divorced and are missing the turmoil in the house. I guess if there are questions, I can try to answer them. But that's pretty much what's been going on here. Brutal, dude. And I will say, let me let me know in the comments. Have you went through a divorce with your parents? My parents got divorced when I was 11. I absolutely hated it. But I knew the writing was on the wall. My dad was abusive. You know, it just wasn't good. It wasn't a good relationship. It was a toxic relationship for sure. But like... You know, it was and it was a long time coming. I was so afraid of my dad. I was like, dude, my dad could could really hurt me. And I was I was really happy. But then at this at the same time, we've seen what the fatherless statistics are for kids at home. Like I started doing bad things. I started getting in trouble. My grades started dipping. So like I didn't have that authority in the home and I wasn't afraid of my mom. I was bigger than my mom when I was 12 years old. So like, what, what are you gonna do, spank me? I remember her spanking me one time when I was like 12 or 13. I just straight laughed at her. I was just like, this doesn't even hurt. Who you hit, it doesn't hurt me. You, you gotta take me away from my Xbox. You know what I mean, stuff like that. But here's what's so funny to me. These women will have a beautiful family have a husband, have a ki have kids, and will throw it all away for one night or two nights with a with the bad boy. She will throw it all away. She literally tossed her entire happy life into the garbage, flushed it down the toilet right next to the turds and the toilet paper for a couple nights with a dude who is a deadbeat, has multiple kids, has a wife currently. It's just like they always want that excitement. They always want that turmoil. They always want that toxicity. You can't ever make a woman happy. You have to give her a little bit of that toxicity. That's why, that's why the guys like uh, the famous soccer player, Kaká. Kaká, Kaká! He, his wife left him because she said he was too perfect. Stupid. He was too perfect. Can you imagine? This is why I'm not always nice to Cass. Sometimes I give her a real hard time. And she, and she, she may ask me to do something and I argue with her just because I know women want that. Now, does it suck? Do I like playing those games? No, but you got to keep it kind of like fresh. You gotta keep things like a little bit of a, of a give and a go. You can't always be like, yes, honey, yes, honey, yes, honey. You can't do that. Because if you do that, they're gonna trample all over you. Once again, remember, women are hypergamous. They wanna be shooting up. They wanna be getting the best guy possible. And do you think the best guy possible would just give her everything that she wants? No, absolutely not. You need to expect things in return. Oh, you want me to do this? Well, what are you gonna do? You want me to do that? What are you gonna do? You need to hold them accountable just as much as they're trying to hold you accountable. But that's a good relationship has to be a little bit of that. Because if you get too comfortable, then then the spark is gone. And that's for guys and girls. Like, you got to keep that spark. you got to have a little bit of toxicity in there. A little bit of good, a little bit of bad, a little bit of yin, a little bit of yang, a little bit of dark, a little bit of light. You know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. Now, does, sometimes does it get annoying? Yeah, it does. But it's, it makes it fun. Me and Cass pick on each other all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is what, it's like when we were younger, you know? You picked on the girls you liked the most. It's kind of the same thing with this. This is why I say when you meet a girl for the first time, never give her a compliment. Pick on her. Pick on her and you'll get her attention way more. Or hit on her ugly friends. And then you'll get her attention. You see the pretty girl, find the ugly girls next to her, talk to the ugly girls, get validation from the ugly girls, then the pretty girl feels like a normal chick. And she's like, wait, why isn't he talking to me? I'm the pretty girl. Guys approach me. No, 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 no. I'm talking to you beat friends. I'm, I'm talking to I'm talking to the, the beat at bests over here. And then I'm going to make you jealous I'm talking to the beat at best because I'm giving them that validation. Therefore, you're going to want that validation. Bro, do you know how many times I bad girls in college just because I made friends with their ugly friends? <laughs> I made friends with their uggos. 
with the Duffs, the designated ugly fat friends. You make friends with them and you're in with the other ones. I'm putting you guys on game. I'm putting you guys on absolute game. Don't forget to cop the new ebook, The Four Steps to Style. It should be in the description. Shout out. I think we sold our first copy the other day. Shout out to whoever it was. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the video. And I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.